Hello, saints of God. Thank you for joining us for another Bread for Breakthrough. On today, as we begin our first fast for the month of March, I want to share with you some teaching from 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, and I, I, a major thrust for this teaching will come from verse 8, where the word of the Lord says, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, very often we're receiving a, a lot of knowledge concerning God. We're reading the word. We're in a good Bible teaching church. We're hearing the scriptures, but we're not seeing the fruit of it in our lives. And that is because sometimes there are conditions, though we have the knowledge, there are conditions that the scripture requires for effectiveness and fruitfulness, full fruitfulness uh, in our lives that we haven't met. And here, uh, the Apostle Peter shares with us some qualities that are essential for effectiveness and fruitful in manifesting the knowledge of God, the things that we've learned that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord, who he is and what he has brought to us uh, by covenant with our God, uh, the Father what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. All of that comes to us through Jesus Christ. It's not just knowledge uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, but it is knowledge that has come to us from the Lord Jesus Christ as he taught here on this earth, as he teaches us through the Holy Spirit. Remember that the Holy Spirit does not speak of himself, but the Bible says whatever he hears, that will he speak. He'll receive a mind, Jesus said, and he will share it with you. So when we're increasing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is teaching us that knowledge. And when the Holy Spirit is teaching us, he's revealing to us what Jesus is saying to us. Glory to God or what Jesus has already said to us. So he says here in verse eight, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective. That's what it means to be barren, praise God, ineffective or unfruitful, glory to God, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, we have to have these qualities. He says, if these qualities are yours, and these qualities must be what? Increasing. So God's people should never be spiritually satisfied. We should always be in the mode of growing and increasing in the things of God. We should never feel self-satisfied and self-sufficient because of where we have arrived. Also, God rewards growth. Glory to God. We are to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. We are to be going on to perfection, going on to maturity. Glory to God. We are to be ever increasing. When you get self-satisfied and you feel like you have arrived, if you're not progressing, you are regressing. If you're not growing, you are dying spiritually. There is no standstill in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of God is a place of growth. It is a place of increase. Whatever pound or talent, that God has placed in your hand, he expects it to be multiplying. He expects it to be increasing. He expects it to be growing. Glory to God. So he tells us, praise God, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being ineffective. Glory to God. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be ineffective. I want to be effective. So today we're talking about the conditions for effectiveness and fruitfulness. And he talks about effectiveness, praise God, and fruitfulness in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the knowledge of God ought to be producing something in our lives. We ought to be getting results from what we know about God. But here are the conditions. And of course, praise God, if these things will keep us from being barren, useless, ineffective, unfruitful in the things of God, well, certainly we want to know what those things are. So let's go back up to 2 Peter 1 and 5. And I'm going to be reading primarily two versions, the King James Version and the Amplified Bible. He says there in verse 5, 
And besides this, giving all diligence. So the first ingredient, the first quality we must have is diligence. You can't be lazy and grow. You can't be lazy and be uh, uh, effective. We cannot be spiritually lazy about the things of God. It requires diligence. Why? Because whatever you're doing for God, the enemy is always going to try to stop you or block you or keep you from achieving that thing, praise God, and growing in that area. The Bible says when the word of God is sown in your heart, immediately the wicked one comes to try to do what? To steal that which was sown in our heart. He's going to try to take it from you. Glory to God. That's what we know about God. That's what we know about the word of God. That's what we know about the things of God. And that's what we know about the devil. He comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's going to require diligence. Well, it also requires diligence because of human nature, because of the flesh. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. The carnal mind, the natural man, he doesn't receive the things of God. They're foolish to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. Praise God. We have to put to death that carnality and press on to pursue the things of God. Glory to God. So he says, besides this giving all diligence, add to your faith. That's the second ingredient. Glory to God. Diligence, glory to God. Matter of fact, you could say this is the first ingredient because, praise God, uh, we got to have it first and then diligently use that faith, praise God, uh, to grow. Faith is where increase begins. Faith is where fruitfulness began. It begins with believing God. You've got to believe God's word is true, and you've got to believe that God is at work in your life and that he's going to empower you, that he is already empowering you to do everything Christ wants you to do. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me, but it starts with that faith. It starts with believing, praise God, that God is real and he is at work in your life. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Everything we do for God, we do it through faith. We do it in faith. Glory to God. And, 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 and the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the word, even our faith. Everything that we're doing in this list and adding these qualities to our lives will require faith. Faith. Faith is where it began. It is through faith you are born again. It is through faith you operate in the gifts of the Spirit. It is through faith you receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It is through faith you pray for these things to grow in your life. And it is through faith that you walk them out. For we walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. So you've got to be diligent to add to your Faith. Glory to God. The Amplified Bible said, for this reason, adding your diligence, glory to, uh, uh, adding your diligence to divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith. What? Employ every effort in exercising your faith. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Praise God. So, uh, you could say, Instead of diligent, you, you could say put forth some effort. Glory to God. You can't be lazy about the things of God. So he says in the Amplified Bible, adding to your diligence, uh, to, uh, to your divine, to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop what virtue. So the King James said, add to your faith what virtue. But this word virtue is moral excellence. Glory to God. It is uh, what Christian energy, the desire to do and to be like God. Hallelujah to God. So when he says add to your faith virtue, you must have a desire to be excellent in the things of God. And I'm not talking about a perfectionist in, uh, in a carnal way, but wanting to be all that God would have you to be. You must desire to grow to mature, glory to God, not to have a that or do spirit about the things of God, not a, to have, you know, a, 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 a less than excellent desire for 
uh, holiness and righteousness in your life. You must want to be all that God wants you to be. Because if you are not striving for excellence, then you're going to be satisfied putting your pound in the ground like that wicked servant. You know, he was just satisfied with what he had. He was not striving for achievement. He was not striving for excellence. And as God's people, we ought to be striving for excellence. We ought to be striving to, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We ought to be striving, praise God, to purge ourselves from everything, glory to God, that, that would hinder us from our effectiveness in kingdom service. The Bible says if a man purge himself from these things, he'll be a vessel under honor, sanctified and fit for the master's use. The Bible says we ought to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Glory to God. So there must be a desire for excellence, to give God glory in our lives. Whatever we do in word or in deed, we ought to be doing it to the glory of God. Glory to God. So we, we, we should want to increase and to excel. That's what virtue is all about. Hallelujah to God. Moral excellence. As somebody said in the song, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him. All through life's journey from earth to glory. Oh, how I long to be like him. So if we're going to be effective. We have, we must be diligent. Praise God. Exercising our faith to strive for virtue, for moral excellence. And then he says, praise God, uh, to that moral excellence, glory to God, exercising this faith, praise God, develop uh, knowledge, glory to God, because you cannot reach moral excellence unless you have a desire, praise God, for more of the knowledge of God, knowledge of his word, Glory to God, because only through knowledge of God's word can we access the grace of God to achieve the purpose of God. The Bible said grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, Peter had just told the people of God in Second Peter chapter one, praise God. He said, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to be effective We've got to have knowledge. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But the people who do know their God, because that's the main knowledge we're striving for, we're not necessarily uh, in need of knowledge of science, knowledge of biology, knowledge of, praise God, economics, in order to excel in this area. Now, knowledge of those things is good, and God would give us knowledge of those things. But in particular, he's talking about uh, knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and what we have hallelujah, as the people of God through Jesus Christ. He's talking about the knowledge of God. Notice, grow in grace, Peter said, and in the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, grace and peace be multiplied through you, to you, through the knowledge of God. Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that they could know the hope of his calling, the riches of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. All of that came through a desire to know uh, and to have more knowledge of God. So, praise God, we start with faith and we are in faith diligently believing, hallelujah, as we strive for moral excellence, uh, God is going to give us knowledge. He's going to give us the know-how to be excellent in uh, our kingdom purpose, uh, our kingdom example, uh, our kingdom witness, glory to God, in carrying out the, uh, the kingdom agenda. And then he says, uh, when you get this knowledge, add to this knowledge what temperance. Uh, the Amplified Bible says, uh, uh, in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. Because it doesn't matter how much we know, praise God, if we will not bring our soulish man under subjection, if we will not keep our bodies under subjection, that knowledge will not profit us. That knowledge will not benefit us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Paul said, I keep my body under, lest after I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. 
Glory to God. You can know some things about God, but you got to have self-control. You got to have self-discipline to put that knowledge into action. You can know about fasting, but it's going to require self-discipline to fast. You can know about prayer, but it's going to require self-control and self-discipline to fast and to pray. You can know, praise God, about the word of God and how to live holy, but it's going to require self-discipline discipline. You got to keep this body, hallelujah, under subjection. Glory to God. He that strives for mastery, the Bible says, is temperate or in other words, exercises self-control in all things. And God gives us that fruit, that ability to exercise self-control in every area of our lives. The Bible says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, and temperance, which means self-control. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of of self control. And then the word of God lets us know when we have that knowledge and we add to it self discipline, self control, then we got to stay with it. Praise God. Because when you try to bring and you through even through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring this flesh under subjection and mortify the deeds of the body. Praise God. This body is going to try to rebel. Flesh is going to try to rebel. Your old members and that old nature is going to come try to regain that territory. The devil is going to try to tempt you. So what do you have to do? You got to persevere. Glory to God. It, it it does not help you to just start and stop. Glory to God. You, when you look into the perfect law of liberty and, rem, and, and see yourself uh, and then begin to put the principles of God's word into action so that you can do and achieve what God wants you to achieve. Glory to God. Uh, it may start out easy, but then there will come a time where that faith is going to be tried. Praise God. That self-control is going to be tested. That's why the Bible said, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing, praise God, that the trying of your faith work is what? Patience, glory to God, which means uh, 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 perseverance, endurance, or steadfastness. The Amplified Bible says it like this, in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. And in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness. Glory to God. So you got to exercise self-control, but then you got to stick with it. Glory to God. You start in your prayer life. You're trying to develop that prayer life. Take it to a higher level. Praise God. Oh, first you got to put it into action. What you know. Praise God. But you rest assured after day two or three, the enemy is going to try to test you, but you got to have some endurance to stay with it. Glory to God. And praise God. The Bible said we through faith and endurance inherit the promises. You require faith to bring forth the fruitfulness and the effectiveness. And a lot of God's people, praise God, they don't have that finishing spirit. And if you don't have that finishing spirit, that steadfastness uh, to stick with it, you're not going to be fruitful. He, the Bible said, be not weary in doing well. For in due season, you will reap. That means you'll be fruitful if you faint not. So if you give up and throw in the towel and back off and back down and, and, and back up, praise God. And you're not diligent in what God has called you to do and to be. Glory to God. Willing to go through the testing. Willing to go through the dry season. Willing to have your faith tried and endure to the end. You will not see fruitfully. Some fruit come forth seemingly overnight. But some fruit it takes time to manifest in our lives. But when you maintain that steadfastness in your self-control, glory to God, it's going to produce something called godliness. What? Godliness. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take a piety and a dependence upon God. Because what you're going to find out, praise God, that you cannot endure in your strength alone. You've got to lean and depend upon the Lord. You've got to say, all of my help, my help, my help. 
comes from the Lord. Why? The youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait, tie themselves, bind themselves to the Lord, shall renew their strength. It takes the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It takes the renewing of strength. It, 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 it takes praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourselves on your most holy Ghost, uh, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. If you don't learn to to have a godliness about you, a piety towards God, a reverence towards God, you're going to stop midstream. You're going to run out of steam, praise God, because we can do all things, but how? Through Christ who gives us strength. Uh, hallelujah to God. You, when, you, when your patience come to it wit's end, you don't throw in the towel. You don't give up on your patience. You don't give up on your self-control. But you just come boldly before the throne of grace to find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. You acknowledge that in your weakness he is strong. You acknowledge that I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. You just learn to be in awe of him and totally depend upon the Lord. Hallelujah to God. So you develop what? Godliness. Uh, a, a God consciousness. Oh, glory to God. Nothing will keep you from sin like a God consciousness. Glory to God. Nothing will keep you in faith like a God consciousness. An awareness that greater is he that is in you. Hallelujah. Ha not some way, somewhere far off, uh, but through the Holy Ghost, we are a habitation of God by his spirit. Uh, and when you are conscious of the fact that God is in you, he said, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusts is in thee. Glory to God. When you develop that God uh, uh, inside mindedness, that consciousness of God, uh, that awareness of God, always thinking about your actions in your day to day life, living in an awareness of his presence. Hallelujah to God. Uh, living in dependence upon him. Living in an awareness that he is in you and with you. Glory to God. Uh, then you will have that sustaining power. Glory to God. Uh, to bring forth uh, fruit. Uh, you have that sustaining power to remain in patience and in self-control and endurance until fruit will manifest. Hallelujah to God. But if you take your eyes off of Jesus, you are in trouble. Glory to God. So he says, uh, develop what godliness and then add to godliness what brotherly kindness. Uh, in other words, uh, our first focus uh, is God was what does God think about me to live uh, to please him. That's godliness to live with a God consciousness. Uh, but as you live with that God consciousness and develop godliness, God also wants you to be conscious about how you treat others as well. Glory to God. It's not, praise God, well, I'm just focusing all of my attention upon Jesus. No, 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 no. If you focus your attention upon Jesus, you're going to be like Jesus and act like Jesus. And you are going to love God's people. As a matter of fact, uh, John said, how can you love God whom you have not seen if you don't love your brothers and sisters that you see every day? So you got to add to that God consciousness an affection, a love, and a compassion for people. Glory to God. Add to your godliness brotherly affection. Glory to God. Develop, praise God, compassion and affection for others. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, compassion and affection for others is not enough uh, because sometimes uh, when we just have that emotional attachment, uh, we will act in a manner that is outside of our scriptural mandate, glory to God, outside of scriptural principles uh, because uh, uh, we, we, want, we want to respond to the needs of others, but simply out of human affection. Uh, but God wants us to know that even our human affection must be guided by the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. It must not just be uh, a, a love that is based on human emotions. So he says, add to your brotherly affection uh, love or agape love, a Christian love. Why? 
Praise God. Because that love is not based on feelings. It's going to act and do what the word say, even when you don't feel like it. And even when feelings of affection want to take you contrary to the word of God, through the knowledge of God, you know that the best thing in every situation is to obey God and to do what the scripture tells you to do. It's never love, not true love, to act in a manner contrary to the word of God. That's why the Bible says the whole commandment can be uh, summarized in this. Thou shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. When you love God and love people, you'll work no ill to your neighbor. Praise God. You're going to obey every other command because you love God and you love people. Praise God. Now, love is what's going to cause your faith to work. Glory to God. All that we do, if we're not operating in love, the rest of it really don't even matter. It, it's not going to profit us anything. We're like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. <laughs> Glory to God. No matter how many gifts we're operating in, we can have faith to move mountains. We can bestow all our goods to be, feed the poor. But see, you can do all of that stuff out of just human affection. Uh, praise God. Uh, but when you are not walking in obedience to God's word, you're not walking in agape love. This is the love of God, John said, that we keep his command. Jesus said, if we love him, we will keep his word. Glory to God. So we got to go from just affection, praise God, to a life that is governed by scriptural principles. Praise God. Knowing by faith, that's what love will always do. And that, that time people will try to manipulate our emotions to convince us to go along with wrong, uh, praise God, out of human affection. But when human affection is trying to push you to do something that violates scriptural principles, love will say, uh, uh, I'm walking by faith and I know God's word is true. There is a way that seem as right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I know if I obey God, things are going to work together for the good. Glory to God. So, what are these qualities again? If we want to be effective uh, in the knowledge of God, if we want to be effective in carrying out the kingdom agenda, it's got to start with faith. And when we operate in faith, praise God, then we got to be diligent in operating in that faith. Diligent in operating in our faith for more excellence. Diligent in operating in our faith for more of the knowledge of God. Diligent in operating in our faith for putting that knowledge into action with self-control. Diligent in operating in our faith until, praise God, with patience so that that self-control can endure. Diligence, praise God, in operating in our faith until we're in self-control and patient through it and develop godly character. Glory to God. And as we develop godly character, praise God, praise God, then we're also conscious of the needs of others and we begin to express brotherly affection. But we don't let our emotions control us. Glory to God. We operate according to the dictates of God's word and true agape unconditional love. So even when we don't feel it, we're going to do what the word says. Hallelujah to God. Because we love God and we love God's people. And then he says, if these things be in you, glory to God, and abound, praise God, that means they're increasing. Praise God. We're not settling, but we're continuing to increase more of the knowledge of God, more self-discipline, more patience, more endurance, more godliness, more brotherly kindness. Praise God. If these things are in you and abound, that means they are increasing. Praise God. They make you to neither be what? Barren, which means ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of God. Matter of fact, let's read our opening text again. He says, of these things are yours and they are increasing. They keep you, hallelujah to God, from being ineffective or unfruitful. I want to be fruitful, saints. I want to be fruitful in prayer. I want to be fruitful in faith. I want to be fruitful in holiness. I want to be fruitful in the fruit of the spirit. I want to be fruitful, praise God, in my prayer life and fasting. I want to be fruitful in winning souls to Jesus Christ. I want to be fruitful in ministry. I want to be fruitful, praise God, in everything God has taught me. Glory to God. I want to be fruitful. What about you? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Glory to God for keeping us. Thank you, O oh God, for covering us. 
Thank you for strengthening us and empowering us to be all that you would have us to be. And we will give your name glory. We will give your name honor. And we will give your name praise. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us from being barren or unfruitful. Show us how to add these virtues to our lives. 